Hello, this video is a brief overview of some of the main things you need to know if you're moving from Godot 2.1 to 3.0. This is not a comprehensive overview of the new engine features. That would take much too long. Instead, it's a quick look at the main gotchas where I've seen people get stuck or confused by some of the changes. The first thing you'll notice is that the UI has changed a little bit. Some of the buttons have been moved around. The play buttons, for example, are over here on the right now. And the theme has changed a little bit. The color scheme's a little different. Something else new is in the editor settings, you can even go in here and change to a different theme. Uh, the preset theme is the one you're seeing. There's even a light one. If you want to try that out, you can have a light theme. Well, although personally, I think it looks a little strange. Some other UI changes, your project settings are now under the project menu, and they've been reorganized a bit. Uh, set to in a few different categories. Uh, one that I really like in here is that your 2D render and physics layers can be named. So if you're using a lot of different uh, physics masks for your different types of objects, so you can go into layer one and rename this to enemies, and then it will appear as enemies in all of the settings dialogs. Another place I see a lot of people getting confused in 3.0 is when importing assets. Godot 3 will automatically import any assets that you place in the project folder. You don't have to do it manually. So I have this art folder that I've added to the project and it's got a bunch of textures and, and sounds in it. And they were automatically imported when I opened the when I opened the window. It actually does it in real time. But if you want to change the properties, for example, this image here, this texture, I want to change its import settings. The import tab is over here on the right. And here you have all of your settings for how you want it to be imported. And you can do this with multiple images at once. If I select all of these, I can apply the same setting to them. For example, if I want maps on for all of them and maybe I want filter on, then I can say re-import and it will do that. I can also go to some type of asset and set whatever settings I want as the default for that type so that the textures will all always be imported with filter off or however you want to do it. And there are some presets here as well. So it's a little bit more, it's a little different from the way it worked before. I think you'll probably find it's more convenient over time, but at the beginning it does tend to trip people up a little bit. So let's look at some of the scripting changes. If you add a script, You'll notice now that you have some language options. We're going to stick to GD script for now. And something very convenient if you're used to using Godot is the template. The default template is going to be the one you're used to seeing where if you add it, it's going to have all of the comments in it. But if we uh, close this one and we would go back over to the node to the and let's add another script and choose you can choose empty, which will do a completely empty script, or you can have no comments, which will remove all those comments that you have gotten used to always deleting the first time you make the script. So we'll, uh, we'll go to with the no comments version. So here's our empty script. Now, the first thing you'll probably encounter writing scripts in 3.0 is that in the previous versions, when you wanted to use the input function, or you wanted to use process, or you wanted to use the physics callback, which is called physics process now. It used to be called fixed process. So that one got a rename. If you want to use these callbacks, in 2.1 you had to enable them. You had to set processing to true in your ready function. But now in 3.0, if you include these functions, they will automatically get processed. So you only need to use that set process. So for example, if I want to set process to false at the beginning of my script, I can put that in the ready and then set it to true at some other time. But you don't have to set them to true by default. If you want to use them, just include them and they will work. Now this next one is one of my absolute favorites. So I've added an animated sprite child to this node 2D. So imagine we, we had some animations in there and we want to be able to, in our script, start and stop them things like that. Now in 2.1 what you had to do was you would have to say git node and then the name 
dot play or whatever you wanted to do with that node. And so that meant you're, if you have a lot of different child nodes that you're accessing, your script could get kind of messy and have so many of these get nodes with, you know, the path to the node, which could be, you know, two or three children deep. And so the way that, the standard way that everybody addressed that was they would make a variable and assign that to the get node, right? So they would put, you know, let's put this up there and they would make that variable a reference to the animated sprite. And so your 2.1 scripts would be full of these on ready calls at the top and then the variable being used throughout your script. And so this is a lot more convenient now in 3.0 when you want to talk to the, or when you want to reference the animated sprite, use a dollar sign. Dollar sign is a shortcut basically for get node. So if I start typing A, you're going to see I get auto completion. It knows what the children are. And I can just say animated sprite.play. And this works with grandchildren nodes. You know, if, if underneath the animated sprite there's a, I don't know, particle 2D. And I rename that the trail or something, just as an example. Then when I want to reference that, it will find it like this. Animated sprite slash trail. And I want to set that emitting property to true. And so it's just a lot more convenient in your script to explicitly see what node you're referencing without having to look at the variable name and then look up above and see which git node that was a reference to. Which brings us to one of the other big scripting changes or changes to the API in general, which is accessing properties directly without having to use the set and get functions. So we look at the class uh, help for the particle 2D, you'll see that it has a list of members now. And so these are properties that you can access directly. So instead of saying set emitting true and get emitting, you can just use the emitting property. And just about all of the nodes have had these member variables enabled on them and it makes for makes things a lot more convenient. For example, moving this node, let's say I have in my, well, let's make our process function. And let's say in here, I want to move my node 2D. I've got a velocity that's a vector to, I just want to move it 10, 10 by 10 pixels. All right, so I want to move that a little bit each frame. And so normally what you would have had to do in 2.1 was you would have to say set pause, get pause plus uh, velocity. All right, and this was a very common construction that you would see. And so what's changed now is that first these abbreviations are gone. So it's position not pause, and it's rotation, not rot anymore. But you can also set these directly with the position property. So the position property contains the node 2D's position. So if I want to change it by adding the velocity, I can just add the velocity like that. And this is a lot more concise and clear and makes for much cleaner code when you are changing properties of a node. Another big change that will get you if you're not prepared for it is the rotation direction has changed. So in 2.1, if I took this sprite and I rotated it by 10 degrees, it would rotate counterclockwise. But now if I rotate 10 degrees, I'm going to ro rotate clockwise. So positive is now clockwise. It also means that in a situation like this, the red vector is now now has an angle of zero, zero points along the x-axis. So the green arrow here, the green vector would have an angle of negative 90. In 2.1, this green arrow would have been the zero angle and we would have gotten positive in the other direction. So it's 
everything is completely reversed from the way you did it before, but probably more like you're used to doing it in other programs where the x-axis is the zero direction and clockwise is positive. There are lots and lots of changes to individual node types, uh, way more than I could get into in this video. For example, Kinematic Body 2D has changed quite a bit. There is no longer a move function, which has been tripping up a lot of people I've noticed on the Discord. Um, so move is now called move and collide. Basically works the same as move did. And then you have additionally a move and slide, which will take care of your sliding along obstacles when you hit them. And so I encourage you as you're starting out with 3.0 if, or if you're trying to convert things over to 3.0 from your older projects, read the API reference. The docs have all the changes in them. The API reference for 3.0 is far, far more complete than 2.1's was. So if you're used to looking in there and not finding information, we are significantly more complete and well documented than we used to be thanks to the efforts of lots and lots of people on the documentation team and pull requests that have been coming in over the last couple of months and they're continuing to improve so keep an eye on the docs and that's your place to look first when you're trying to find out what has changed so coming up you'll see from me some more videos on individual components of 3.0 and how to use them. I've already done one on Particles 2D that you can see linked below. So please subscribe and look for those coming soon. Thanks for watching.